Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of SUP FM, your favorite streetwear podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Luke Trevisi. With me, as always, I got my boy, my guy, Chris Cheney with me. What up? And uh, Lawrence will not be here as of right now. Might come in later. We don't know yet. Um, but uh, regardless, that's our homie, uh, LZD325, Lawrence Deloach. Yep, you can find him at what he just said, LZD325, on all social platforms. But what about you, Luke? Where can they find you? Well, hold on. Before we go on to me, let's talk about how uh, Lawrence also has a podcast called I Hate This Job. That's true, which you've done. I've done. Uh, great, great episode. I think he's waiting until a thousand, number 1,000 to get you on. That's what Yeah, I think so. Oh, he's really waiting to you know make sure that he wants to leave it with a bang. You know what I mean? He was like, let me, let me, let me close this one out real good. The guy that I've been doing a podcast with for years. For too long. <laughs> Save him for like episode 1000. Yep. <laughs> um, yes. So, you know, I, you can find me at Trevizus, T R O V E E Z U S, on all social media platforms. Uh, if you go to my Instagram, in my bio is going to be a link to a YouTube clip of me doing stand up, which I would like you to check out. Uh, yeah, go check it out. Can find you at not that Cheney, C H E N E Y, on all social platforms. Um, you can also find my design work at A Life. Um, Spring just dropped the tease. Uh, so periodically each week, there'll be more and more of my work dropping on there. And please check that out and please purchase if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Buy, buy it, buy it all. Don't think yep. about it, just buy all of it. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. Uh, you can also find the podcast at Sub Podcast NYC on all Instagram uh, on all social media platforms. Instagram is where we are the strongest as of right now. Right. Um, shout out to Haas for giving us a uh, new uh, YouTube wallpaper kind of situation for a thumbnail. Our, yeah, the thumbnail. thumbnail. Yeah, 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 the thumbnail for our, our new pick. We got like like I don't know, like twenty views. I don't want to like blow it up or anything, but it changed the uh, the algorithm a little bit because it's now. A little bit more findable, I, I would say. So here's the thing, guys. Let's just be very transparent. We're four dudes who have a lot of pride. And some of these plug, this plug shit, this like really getting to go and like the thumbnail shit, we're like just getting customized to it. So like things like Haas helping us with the thumbnail, it's all in the Discord, right? So like we have a community built in the Discord. We're all helping each other. Like he just said, Haas made us some thumbnails where we're realizing like, oh shit, even if it is like 20 extra views than we normally get, but it's still 20 views, like whatever, who gives a shit? So join the Discord. That's probably the main thing I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. um, it's always uh, in, the invitation is a link in the description. Um, come hang out. Previous guests, guests who work at high end fashion labels, other streetwear labels, listeners from all over the globe. You know, we got kids from the UK. We got um, your like all, all of Europe. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Australia. We have a base. You know what I mean? So just yeah. come kick it in the Discord. Yo, this is the spot to hang out. That is the spot to hang out this week. Uh we were uh, talking about uh, the Hawaii's pretty much all week. That was kind of our big thing. We had all the raffle links going up, going crazy. It's a fun time. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. Like, we're trying to help each other get shoes. You know what I mean? So, like, come in, use our raffle links. I will admit once again, uh, some of the people I know who I've worked with in the past who work in street where use our raffle links to help them. Yeah. So don't feel any shame about that. You know what I mean? Like, we're all trying to get the best shit that we can with what we got. Yeah, man. It's, listen, we're trying to help you get shit for retail. So come to our Discord and, and chill with us. Um, which I have a story uh -huh. uh, I would like to tell you. But first, I would like to lead into that story with I was just literally a couple hours ago at the Cause uh, exhibit in the Brooklyn Museum. Nice. Yeah, it was very cool. I didn't expect to go. I got a text from my sister actually Thursday. And she was like, yo, my boy who likes the same shit that you do um, is going to New York for the exhibit um he i guess he was here before but what he did was he just i guess you couldn't go see the exhibit and uh then go to the gift shop there was something weird where they were doing because there was a lot of like shit people wanted to resell in the gift shop so what he did is instead of actually going to see the exhibit he was here like a month ago he went and grabbed all the shit that he wanted to resell and then he just dipped but he couldn't see the museum he couldn't see the exhibit because after you enter the uh the gift shop they don't let you see the exhibit wow so, crazy I don't know, some weird shit, but like, whatever, who cares? So he wanted to see the exhibit. So he hit my sister was like, yo, I'm going. Do you want to go? And then um, she was like, yeah. And I guess he, there was an extra ticket for whatever reason. Maybe someone didn't go. I don't know. But like I got invited and uh, man, it was very cool, man. Yeah. You forget like who cause is and what he did. You know what I mean? Like cause is like that guy right now. Yeah, I guess so. He's like he's like the kind of the uh, when you think of like designer toys or anything like that, like. Kind of like high, I guess, like streetwear art 
Uh, well, contemporary art, we'll yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. He's the, he's kind of the guy for that. Have you ever been to um, Big J's friend? Uh, I think Gary is his name. The his apartment. Do you know who I'm talking about for like Fourth of July? That I, the, he, Wayne, he has the Wayne. The, he, there's the party in the backyard, right? I haven't yeah. been to it, but like I, Becky's told me about it. You told me about it. Shout yeah, out Becky. yeah, yeah. So there's like a yeah. guy who lets uh, lets one of our uh, comedian uh, friends. Uh, use his uh, roof for for Fourth of July, and every time it's great because uh, it will just be me and Becky inside of like his apartment, like going and getting ready to use the bathroom. We're just having a conversation about like cause and like Supreme and all this other stuff, and everybody else is like, "This guy's got way too many toys," you know? They don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The people don't get it, and they it's and all right. So hold on, let me share my screen. So I apologize to all the audio only listeners, um, but I'm going to be showing some pictures. Cause like you forget. So right when you walk in, bro, this thing, we got these two wood, uh, companions. I'll just keep calling them companions. Um, these are like 30 feet high. Right. And they're like 30 grand each guy. The amount of money that was in this part of the museum, just the cause shit was yeah, out of line. So, you know, you got like the anatomy one, um, right, the classic. So these pictures are going to kind of jump around, but like, yeah, they have like the Snoopy and all his, uh, simpsons work that he did not necessarily with them directly but like the paintings that he originally did to sort of set off the relationship you know right yeah he did that uh that one like family picture where it's all caught. yes there was right. he got into some trouble with that though yeah and as you should i mean that's how a lot of these relationships start right it's like you know as an artist you're unauthorized to use these companies intellectual property mm -hmm. but as an artist you want to make art the way you want to do it so some shit like you know making snoopy with the x's and the eyes is what you got to do yeah but this is honestly one of my favorite things uh, that was in the museum, right? It's not actually one of his pieces of art. It just it's so funny to see something like this be like written typed out oh, like, like for a serious museum. Yeah, piece? so this yeah. was typed out like somebody like seriously would like, you know, spell check all that. They printed the vinyl. They hung it. Um, it's just giving credit to Nigo from bait for doing like his first companion, like that first collaboration that really set it off. And it mentions Jay Z. It mentions Pharrell. Yeah. You're like, how is this hanging up in a museum? This is crazy. It is pretty crazy that like the thing that we talk about, like every week is like is a considered a museum piece at some, you know? Yeah. At some level. Um, here, I'll just read one excerpt from it. Um, so uh, ex uh, pardon my uh, pronunciation of Nigo's actual name. Uh, Tomoki, uh, in quotes, Nigo. Come on, it's Tomoyaki. Tomoyaki, excuse me. Nigo. I said I apologized early. <laughs> Nagao. Like, Nagao. You act like you don't watch any anime. <laughs> Do you think I can say any of those words? I, eventually, you can say R R every now and then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, of the fashion label, A Bathing Ape, in parentheses, Bape. And uh, Hikaru uh, Iwagana, Iwanaga, Iwanaga, excuse me, founder of the toy design company Bounty Hunter. Uh, Nigo provided cause with one of his first earliest commercial collaborations, which attracted recording artists like Jay-Z and Pharrell Williams to his work. Actually, it's pronounced Pharrell Williams. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. I'm, I'm, I'm oh, no, it's AZ because the J is silent, right? <laughs> <laughs> no but like reading that sentence dude is crazy because then the, the key word to me there is commercial collaborations right as an, a street artist going into com the commercial space it's very hard to break through yeah it's one of the hardest things you could do as an artist so like just thinking about that it was like in 1999 they're talking about you know we're, we're like years years and years ago i mean look at this, some of this stuff so like i don't know if the scale of some of this stuff can really be perceived but these are all huge these are all like as big as you and i yeah 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 that that yeah I think so. So I, that's like the Elmo companion. I don't know what that specifically the name of this one is really, but it, like I called it the Elmo companion. <laughs> it's more of a cookie monster situation, but yes, Elmo. Cookie yeah, kind of cookie monster. Cheap. It's like he fused the two. Yes. I didn't know he did a flip on Gumby. That's Bendy. He did. Oh, that's Bendy. His <laughs> the, the yellow thing here. Again, oh, yeah. I apologize for the uh, audio only listeners, but this was probably my favorite right, part. Right. So you can only see one screen here. Uh huh. Also, check out that girl with the um, Sakai waffles right there. I'll talk about oh, the yeah. heat that everyone was wearing. But so you had these four different companions laying in the middle. Right. You had these wooden ones on the side. And then you had all the videos of every balloon he made of the companion. OK. And yo, I didn't realize he like so that's like in the middle of uh that's California somewhere you can see in the back, but like 
That's bigger than a boat. That's San Francisco. Yeah, whatever. That <laughs> all West Coast shit is the same to me. It's like yeah, no, it's I, all I like a, but, but it's that, like we're behind the Golden Gate Great Bridge. It's like a, a giant balloon of a cause companion but, statue. Floating. But dude, that's no, that's as big as a boat. Nice. Like I know what the scaling is off. It like it just comes back. It's weird, but like that's as big as a boat, man. And all these wooden ones were a certain like surrounded by those screens. Like that's a close up one laying down. But like mm-hmm. these are all like very well made, very crafted. Like these are this was a very cool experience. So I know um, it's a, a lot of the shit is sold out right now. So that's why I'm trying to share as much as I can about the exhibit for those who, especially in New York, can't go. Mm-hmm. But super cool. Here's one just off painting. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, no, it was such a good tool. But so this is the this is the other thing. So, like I said, the kid I went with and my sister, um, he had been there before and he scooped a bunch of shit um, to resell. There was only two items per person, even though it's like there wasn't a lot of shit in there now. Like there was no men's tees. There was only youth. I could have got you with youth large. You could have got me a youth extra large, bro. <laughs> I didn't even think about it. <laughs> bro. And I only bought one. <laughs> I only bought oh, one thing, bro. too. Damn, bro, you could have gotten me a youth extra large cause shirt and I would have been like Gucci for life. Damn, I didn't even think about it. Um, So anyway, like my dumb ass is like I'm looking around uh, like there's only youth tees. I'm not wearing that. I'm like not a poster guy. I mean, you now see, I, I got no, I got to go. You understand that, right? <laughs> it's all sold out. I don't think anyone can go. Uh, I mean, you guys see the back of my room from any one of the other uh, um, YouTube audience. Like I'm not like a poster guy. I got some art hanging, but I'm like not a poster guy, but. The kid I was with, his name is uh, Caddy. He cops two um, posters of artworks that were hanging in the museum, right? I'm a dummy. I'm like, let me just grab this tote. So I say, grab something, 25 bucks, whatever. Um, We're walking out. And I'm like, I'm like, so what are you doing? Why did you get two of the same poster? He was like, oh, I'm going to sell one. I'll keep the other. I'm like, guy, you're not making any money on that. You might as well just fucking whatever. He goes, no, 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 look. So he pulls up stock. And I think he bought the poster for 30 each. Mm-hmm. And it was on stock for 75. So that one poster covered him the whole way. And I'm an idiot. I'm, I was looking at the posters like, why the fuck am I going to buy those? Who the fuck wants a poster? You fool. I you know, it's, fool. it's it's comfortable to see. Like, it's I'm glad to see that somebody in this group of uh, of hosts still thinks like a designer and not so much like a reseller like me and Lawrence do. <laughs> I mean, that's where I'm coming. That's my background. You know, like, yeah. I don't always think like that. Like, it, it reminded me that I should. Yeah, you should. Every it reminded me that like some of this stuff although like you don't realize there's money in there that there is money but also i'm not in this for money so that's the other thing that's why i'm not always like with that on the front of my brain you know sure sure i totally understand that that's very fair um now you said mentioned that there were some people wearing some heat there was some heat it was interesting because there's uh I don't know who like who's a regular museum goer out of the listeners, but um, as a person who went to art school was like always kind of like in museums or whatever, there was never any heat. I can uh, confidently say most times that I was in a museum, I had the best shoe on. Nice. This was not the case. This, mm-hmm. There was a lot. So we saw those Sakai waffles. Um, I saw the Werther Spoon Adidas for the first time in person. First time? First time in person. Mm-hmm. Um a lot better than I thought they were going to be. They looked like kind of messy to me, mm-hmm. but like the, the strings hanging off and oh, the, the Stan Smith, right? The, yeah. The Stan Smith. Oh, got gotcha, you. Got gotcha, you. Got gotcha. you. Yeah. I not the, the new one, not the 97s or anything. No, 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 okay. no. Um, but those, uh, those flower ones, like super dope. Um, a lot of Yeezys, of course, those are like the layup shoe to get if you don't want uh, Nikes, you know what I mean? But like, yeah. there was a lot of like the dude I was with was Rockefeller forces. Like there was like just a lot of good sneakers. Um, the, uh, I refuse to learn the name of this brand because I'm after I learned Ame Leon Dior's name, I'm like, I'm done learning fancy oh, brand names. I'm a man, yeah. yeah. I'm a no, 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 no. I'm a man, yeah. It's me, <laughs> French guy. <laughs> I'm an anomaly. I'm an anomaly. <laughs> this is your shit, though. That's a French brand. You should be able to say it. Yes, I'm a man, yeah. <laughs> As the French guy, which I guess for right now, this is a French episode. I'm a man, yeah. <laughs> I saw those in person fire. Yeah. Actually, after seeing those in person too, uh, and also having my love for the fragment threes, I think I just like the threes without elephant print. And I know that's sort of like kind of an egregious thing to say. Religious, yeah. But like it's just so it's much cleaner without them. Yeah. I agree. 
I can I see know. it. It's not like a crazy. It's not the craziest thing in the world. Uh, I think the elephant print was kind of a turnoff for me when I was uh, growing up. When it came to the thirties, I didn't really like the silhouette, and I didn't really like the the cracking of the. Oh, the like elephant the print was the shit to me. I was like, oh, this is this shit bangs. I want this shit on everything. <laughs> Put that shit on everything, bro. Yeah, but I mean, you know, and then we've seen them do that, and I'm like, oh, no, stop. Can you do? <laughs> can you do an A Life T-shirt with elephant print? I'm sure they've done it before. Can you do one n- n- now? <laughs> yeah, I could do. Uh, well, I'd have to. Well, I'll now, do now, it, now. and then I'd have to be like, "Hey guys, do you, should we make this?" And everyone's gonna probably hey, say no. Like elephant print. <laughs> what is this? Two thousand five, Chris. Two thousand five is like I. It tells the story of how I used to work at Mark Echo. <laughs> like, that's a rhinoceros, though, Chris. <laughs> yeah, they don't let my lineage get into the line, unfortunately. <laughs> um. Yeah, you also mentioned those. Uh, you know, you saw a lady with the with the Sakai uh, vapor waffles. Yeah, that was um, in the photo. Of the vapor waffles were there, just like general, general like the the floor was hot. Floor was hot. The the wood that was being touched by all these sneakers was getting warped by the amount of heat it was touching. <laughs> you had to keep it away from the wooden statues. Yeah, man. No, so it was just it was just a very interesting crowd too. It was nice to see like a more, um, I'm not gonna say youthful, but like excited crowd to be there they were younger but usually when you go to museums it's like it's not dull but it's sort of like stale you just go to the wrong museums man you gotta go to the moma no moma's cracking too but it's still stale in the air you know what i mean because like here's the other thing too it's like you got full families of who don't know what the fuck they're looking at that's true you got uh foreigners who uh also don't know what they're looking at there's a bunch of people who really don't know what they're looking at and i know art is like only art because we're able to interpret it so like everyone's supposed to be able to look at it or whatever but like you gotta remember like this is so hyper specific mm-hmm. that this this crowd of people was like there because they know who causes which was a very refreshing sort of like environment to be in okay yeah that's true i could see that that seems like a a very good answer as to why it was enjoyable i i'll accept that <laughs> yeah like when you go to the moma like you see the kids get hype over the Street Fighter display because they're like, dude, video games are art. Fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then when you go look at like any other thing, you show them a Van Gogh. You think they're going to be hype over that? You know, uh, I don't know. Maybe they'd be like, yo, that's the guy from the TikToks with the one ear. <laughs> they don't even know that he cut off his ear, bro. That's what I'm they saying. They definitely know that he cut off his ear. That's like guy. the most memeable thing about him. No, I, if you ask any 13 year old right now, there's no way. But- All right. Let me just go through my list of 13-year-olds that I know. <laughs> I'm making a sour face at Chris right now because I just want to make that clear to the listeners as if I were to imply that I don't know any. Well, tell us, tell us, audience, Discord, tell us, what do you think? Who does, do 13-year-olds know who Van Gogh is? <laughs> yeah, do, do 13-year-olds know who Van Gogh is or has our uh, education system failed them? I don't know. It absolutely failed them. But anyway, we, I digress. We should... Uh... Get well, I, wanted to, I wanted to talk about, you know, the vapor waffles that you were talking about. There oh, okay. are new vapor waffles. You know? There are. There's new Sakai vapor waffles coming out, and I'm very excited for them. Why? Um, because they're pretty. <laughs> like, is there? do I have to have a reason? They're just pretty. I, I don't these. know. I'm I'm just over them. You're just over them? Hold on. First, let me, let me yeah, pull, pull them up. up. This, this purple, this dark purple called dark iris. It's like a purple and orange and some sort of like a navy or midnight navy blue. It's, it's sick, bro. I like the color scheme. Look, I'm not mad at him, but I'm just mm-hmm. like over this silhouette. Like, I don't like I'm not going to say I don't like reruns. Yeah. Or part twos or a, a, like a continuation of a shoe. But like mm-hmm. they never let off the pedal on this shoe. OK. I mean, like how many different kinds are there now? Four. Right. Uh, there's been two separate drops with two yeah. or three each. Oh, and there's going to be a sale colorway, too. OK, maybe maybe we're going a little crazy. <laughs> Wait, show, pull up the sale. Didn't we, they drop that already? No, this this is the, the they didn't drop this yet, did they? Oh no, April twenty second, twenty twenty one. Okay, so oh, yeah, they that, just that, announced these. Yeah, that was two days ago. Okay. Oh man, I don't. Yeah, know but how, see, I, the, yeah, I'm like whatever, like cool. Yeah, but it's like it's got a fat tongue, and it looks like the tongue is sticking out another tongue. <laughs> or, <laughs> it's like, I don't so, know. But like man. these, uh, what are the other collaborative shoes? They're kind of like burn it into the ground like these like uh the sakai's of course are definitely number one i think number two maybe the travis scott's are 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 being burned into the ground some you know yeah i mean like you know i like these shoes i'm not mad at them i would never wear them i think i would look insane in them but like it it 
it's just a lot for me and they they haven't let the let off the pedal so it's just seemed like it's too, like i'm sort of like whatever there's no if we get this if i get the sesame blue one i'm going to start wearing uh big trench coats with these and act like i don't know anybody anymore i'm just gonna feel like a superstar in these that just doesn't fuck with anybody why do you have to wear a big trench coat i think it just it will match with it pretty well <laughs> it's like that sesame color will match with like that brown i'm not mad at that i'm not mad at that yeah, yeah, yeah. So I walk around like that with my with my Sakai Vapor Waffles. And then I'll talk about like some indie band that I've never heard of before, but I pretend, you know. Wait, what are Sakai's going on stock right now? Um, Which we have to talk about their new logo. God, it is so bad. Oh, yeah. That's a, there's a lot of fun stuff to talk about today. Um, which ones? Which ones are we looking at as far as Sakai's? I mean, any of them. So like the ones you just were talking about, the uh, the Sesame Blues, they're 522, but they're not out yet, right? They're not out yet. So means- that's a fake. Oh, I hate how they do that. We shouldn't be able to see a price on these until they're out. Yeah, I know. I know. Like, that's not how stocks work. I can't look at what the fuck uh, Coinbase's IPO was before it came out. Yes, you can. You can? Yeah, you can see what, what the initial public offering is going to be. Oh, but that's a that's a stagnant price. It's yeah, it starts at so like they, they'll tell you like it starts at like three sixty five. Like, like yeah, oh, okay, that yeah, yeah, that's fine. Evaluated at this much. And yeah, then, but it doesn't. Yeah. It, but this this IPO on this fucking vapor waffle isn't like a real number. You that's know true. what I mean? That's I guess true. is retail the IPO? Yeah, I would say that the retail is the IPO. I hate everything right now. <laughs> this is so funny. Just stock trying to talk X, stock baby. with. With sneakers. Um, Stonk X, baby. Stonk X. Yeah, so some of these, like, they kind of went down, right? They're so like, like 500, right? They're all oh, around those, the 500. Those green and yellow ones are 289. But, I mean, either way, I was just trying to see where like where they kind of were on the... Oh, um, the green and yellow ones are 289 for a size 14. Let's just make that clear to the listeners. Nobody go and run to Stonk X right now and try to buy these for cheaper. Unless you're a size 14, then go for it. Yeah, a lot of these shoes are... Uh, not doing great in resale value. Like 500, somewhere around there. I don't know what's good for resale anymore. Like, I don't know, like, what the profit margin is. I guess it's whatever, like, the person needs to pay their bills. But, like, I don't know, really? like, what, like, the, like, like what what's a good margin anymore? Because I feel mm-hmm. like, if say, if you buy a Dunk for 100 and you sell it for 1,000, you know, it's 900 bucks, that's great. But if you buy a Sakai at whatever and then sell it at whatever, you only make, like, say, 120. Like, is that good? I don't know. Honestly, any type of profit for me is good. You know, like if it's like ten dollars, I'll just be like, okay, cool. So I earn points on my my credit card, um, and then I also made an extra ten dollars. Cool, that's great. That's the adult version of reselling. Yeah. That's the adult. <laughs> Let me build my credit by paying off my sneakers. By paying off my sneakers immediately. Um, Very boring. <laughs> actually, you know what? I think we could segue um, into another shoe that I, they haven't really let off the pedal. Uh-huh. They kind of have the Union Force, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's I mean, what do you the, think? I fucking I love these, man. I'm you know I'm team I'm team. Get me as many fucking opportunities to try to get a shoe as possible. So I like the yellow. I like the yellow hits. You know, obviously mm-hmm. that Union LA yellow. I've got. I like the green. I like that crazy green going on. Uh, the green and the blue are literally colors from Yu Yu Hakusho. It is, that is the green that is in Yurameshi's fucking uh, high school outfit. And then the blue right. is the spirit gun. Bro, bro, it's just fucking, it's a layup for me. All right, with that reason, it makes sense to me. I'm not saying I'm mad at him. I'm just saying, like, I'm still not off the high of the... I the didn't really get to wear the fours out. The word. So you don't want these, is what you're saying. No, I want them. I'll, <laughs> I want them. Um, and I'll probably get them. No lie. I know. Uh, that's, that's why. That's what I was kind of getting at. I was like, "Oh, you don't want these?" Okay. <laughs> no, I, I, I think I might get another email. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Asking me if I want them. Um, but I, yeah, I just really still haven't scuffed my other fours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, let me ha- let me like wear those and like have an issue cleaning them before you come out with another version of the shoe. You know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I hear you. It, I mean, it's only been a year. Yeah. And it's also like I couldn't wear the I could wear them. But then like, you know, co- I mean, COVID flexing was weird. And mm-hmm. um, and then like, I'm, yeah, I mean, there's plenty of excuses that I could well, make. Also, why I didn't we don't wear know them, but... what the we don't know what the flip top on these looks like. Is it going to be the same or is it going to have like it's, you know, 
no, is it going to have a different look to it? I, I guess like maybe the they might have a little game? secret in there, but they definitely have a secret. I just don't know what like what the tongue's going to look like when it's I, opened up all the way. I think they'll just be like the gray. You could see under it. You could see the tongue. Mm, but the other one had like that con- confetti kind of look to it. You know what I mean? The guavas. I guess so. Did you open yours? I don't remember. Yeah, I opened Did mine. You cut them. Yeah. Yeah. It's got, oh, there was also like a yellow one that's like a purple and blue. That yellow one can get out of my face. Yellow one can. Oh, the yellow one can get out of your face. Okay. All right. Well, well. All right. All right. Well. All right. If I get an email, Luke, you can have those ones. <laughs> oh, I, I have to. I have to settle. I'll be okay with that. Um. Yeah. Listen, I like them. I like them a lot. Um. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get a pair. Um. But I'm not mad at them. I like the idea of being. You know. These sneakers need to be more accessible, I think. And having like this, this is kind of a way to do that. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Lawrence is coming in. Lawrence DeVoke oh, is here. Oh, my guy. Perfect What's timing, up? buddy. What's up, guys? We What's just, up? We just started talking about the, uh, we, we just went over the Union 4s, you know? Yes. What do you feel about the the new stuff? Um. Well, first, I just want to say, uh, What's up, episode 162, your boy LZD 325 in the building. Yeah. Uh, happy to be with my yeah. guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this I actually this would be the second best colorway out of the, you know, like I feel not the second best, but I feel like the their first two were dope. And then these feel like just the throw ons, man, in a sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't get me twisted. I'm copying. I'm trying to cop those Desert Morse, Morse joints, but the black ones were to me the best union four out of the bunch. So what I was just kind of saying, L, to Luke was like, I haven't even gotten to really wear the other ones yet. You know what I mean? So like, Mm -hmm. you know, we were kind of talking about um, just like letting off the pedal on the shoes, like let them breathe so we can like appreciate them. And like, I haven't really appreciated the first pair yet. How am I supposed to like get hype for these when I still got the other ones unscuffed? Like, I got to go live in them before I get a chance to care about these ones, you know? No, I feel you. I I, I think that these are uh, like I said, they're they're uh, the union. They did well. The first two were set up, you know, amazing. These people still gonna go crazy for them because, of course, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, they still they still hot though. I'm not gonna like sit here and figure with you. I do like them, but the first two did something a little different to my body. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Are you team? <laughs> Is this something different in my body. <laughs> are you team? Uh, are you over the vapor waffles too? We we talked about the the new colorways uh, while you were gone. Never was a fan of the second the 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 vapor waffles, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Never got behind them shits, man. Mm-hmm. The first joints, the 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 LDV or you know the LD waffles or whatever. Mm-hmm. The first amazing. Then these yeah. it just felt like why fuck up a good thing? Yeah, man. I feel you on that. That's fair. I like the sesame colorway personally, but you know, that's just me. I hear exactly what you guys are saying. It's not a very wearable shoe. Mm-mm. No, but L, I think you came in at a good time too, because I think right now uh, we were going to go into the Kobe stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh wow, yeah. It's um, yeah. I don't know if you you guys where you want to start at, because you guys got the floor, man. I mean, so we've previously had a discussion about some guy saying he was going to leave. Uh, nike and do his own thing and uh-huh. i think if i'm remembering correctly we're all kind of like yeah i mean like cool that you're telling us i guess but like mm-hmm. you should have said this maybe when he was like don't say it after he's dead you know what i mean like i uh-huh. can't like defend himself he can't like give any context or whatever uh-huh. and this is sort of similar i mean you know with vanessa taking the charge and sort of like you know admitting that like yeah we're backing out of it and like you know i i just i i'm kind of like it still kind of lingers to me like i wish this wasn't happening when you know when he was passed i wish he was kind of around to like shed some light on his thoughts you know in his own words but now here we are we got this thing where like he's not at nike anymore and vanessa got it and there's like a bunch of confusion of what's really going on so i don't know what you guys think but i'm confused mostly i'm pretty you know i'm team vanessa on this one listen if she don't want to have people you know if she doesn't want to have kobe's name on fucking sneakers anymore and she's you know she doesn't want to do that. That's fine. She could. She didn't have to. You know. I mean, the, she brought up good points. the The accessibility to the shoe, which we've all complained about, was like the main thing, at least for yeah. her. I think. Yeah. I think mm. that that was uh, that was the big thing for me too. Is that like, you know, she wants her husband's memory. Like the Grinches were like, I think the 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 tipping point for her, 
right? When the Grinches mm-hmm. came out, she even said like, oh, we're going to try to make sure everybody gets a pair of these because she knew how special that shoe was to, you know, everybody who saw him play in those Christmas in, in, the, in those mm-hmm. shoes on Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody knows how, how special that shoe is to them. And then, you know, Nike, knowing that everything is going, they're not stupid. They know they could have made more. You know, this could have been a shoe that landed on the shelves. And if it did land on the shelves, you know that Vanessa might still be in her in the Nike contract. So I'm kind of glad that this happened because Nike needs to be needs to get pushed back for a lot of the stuff that they do. Yeah, I feel like uh, what the problem was, you know, and, and, and I will say this. And unfortunately, when Kobe passed away, his sneakers, his memorabilia, everything that had his insignia on it became straight. It just shot straight to the through the roof to the moon, and, bro. And when we look at when Kobe was alive and and when they were doing pro trolls and stuff like that, a lot of these sound the shelves mm-hmm. and and true hoopers. If you like if you play ball and you realize, you know, I'm, I used to love playing in the Kobe eights, uh, you know, stuff like like those type of models, Kobe nines. But you were a basketball player if you if you got them. But now everyone and their mother just wants to, to flip them. And I feel like, you know, with the whole Nike milk, the Mamba day, the A24, and it was like, oh, we got this big Kobe celebration. And, and you know, and, and then it's just limited uh, drops, frustrating drops. And I get where Vanessa's saying now, I feel like both parties kind of need each other. Because if you if you get rid of if if Kobe, if Nike says, all right, well, you know, we'll still put out the Kobe models. We just can't, you know, we can't use his name or his, his, his likeness like they've done in the past with other models. But then you look at on Vanessa's end and, and if they say, well, we're going to take our we're going to create our own brand mm-hmm. or we go to Adidas or some shit like that. The, the memories that Kobe had in a lot of those sneakers, like you just mentioned, the Grinches. You know, the 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 cold, the all star joints, the you know, all these different models. It's it's what fucking drove the legacy. Yeah. So I would hope at some point these two would come to some sort of agreement and it doesn't have to be tomorrow. But for the what Kobe, you know, he's done for that brand. There's Michael, there's LeBron, there's Kobe. And. In terms of basketball, KD obviously has sneakers, but those three giants. Yeah, that's the holy trinity right there. Yeah. Exactly. So for Nike to not, or for Vanessa, you know, you, but I think there needs to be more accessibility. We need to have more, more women's sneak, kids sneakers, women's sneakers. Right. Mm-hmm. We need to be a lot more than what Nike was doing because Nike was catering to their fucking reselling core. Yeah. I mean, you even brought up Adidas. Uh, I would love for somehow to like it, let let Nike make their sh- Kobe's, let Adidas make those old models because that's a part of the legacy too. Like I would love mm-hmm. a pair of Crazy Eights. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. I want the toasters. The toasters, bro. <laughs> the toasters are the worst, the best worst shoe that existed. Remember that um that USA model? No. Yes, I do remember. Yes. Yo, they made a USA like, like <laughs> I don't even, I can't even describe them because. It was the toaster, but in USA colors, but still metallic. That shit was crazy. Mm-hmm. I want to see it so bad. <laughs> there's um, there's a there's a classic picture of like Shaq like half making fun of him, pointing at him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you can find it, them. pull it up. But maybe just do USA Kobe oh, Adidas oh, too. Oh, I, I found them. <laughs> oh my god, bro! I love toasters. They're the worst best shoe. The best worst shoe. It goes I, both ways. I think these right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. God damn, those are horrific. But in we the see, best way possible. We've seen with Adidas when when Kobe was with Nike and Adidas would retro the Kobe models. Mm-hmm. Um, it it didn't have the same significance. Yep. And I think and I think Nike is obviously Nike is Nike. They're the machine, mm-hmm. you know. But in the last decade, they've dropped partnerships with four guys who have had some of the biggest most influential designs and sneakers in, in, in their roster, Kanye West, Jerry mm-hmm. Lorenzo, Sean yep. Weatherspoon, mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant. Mm-hmm. And and we have to start saying, hey, Nike, like, I get it. Like, you know, you are who you are. But your partnerships with these people who are continuing to drive your brand, whether it's hype, relevance, whatever you want to say, they they have to do better. But they just feel like, what we got Jordan, we got LeBron, 
We got, you know, all the, the rap artists, the Drakes, the Travis Scott. So there's always going to be someone that's moving the needle. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's true. It's, it's very frustrating. The brand is just too strong. You can't you can't do anything about it. I it's do... like Jesus and Mero brand too strong, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I was going to say, I, f- I do feel better like mentally. I know this is going to sound dumb because it's like just oh, like we're doing it's... a sneakers wellness check again. Yeah, I feel better not having the sneakers app. I feel so much better. Really? Well, just because you ignorance is bliss and I can't see what I'm not getting. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm 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 like kind of industry, like whatever. So, like, I get handed stuff mm. and I'm I'm not I'm not used to like chasing. So, like, when I chase to no avail, like where I'm trying to chase the dragon, you know what I mean? For like lack of a better metaphor, the sneakers app was doing nothing for me except making me feel bad. Yeah. But now that it's gone, I'm feeling pretty good. Not knowing what sneakers I'm not getting is pretty nice. Can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still hitting like that? No. No, not really. Like, I mean, I hit on confirmed this week for the Yeezy 700s, um, mm. but I, I missed on the Hawaii's, the only shoe that I wanted this week. Right. Um, which is, you know, it's whatever. It, it, it's whatever. How's the resale on Hawaii's doing? You it's guys like know? three. 50 360 somewhere around there right now it's like i think it's flirting with the idea of of going down to those low 300s but once it does i i might have to pull the trigger you might strike i might strike i i'm i'm tired of waiting like every time i there's a 420 release ever since like the white widows came out Mm -hmm. because you know the skunks were already like crazy valued the the second they came out Mm -hmm. uh people were like already about them and and crazy value in like 2000 nine or ten or whatever it was was like four hundred dollars but that was just too much for me to afford at the time mm-hmm. white widows were like 120 130 and then resale was like 150 160 i could have done it back then but now here i am you know uh i've missed out on on every 420 shoe at this point and this one i'm gonna try not to let slip through my fingers yeah this ain't going too crazy it's kind of around like a 350 400 range i mean when you get to the bigger sizes you know looking at like you know almost 600 for a 15 which was whatever down even here mm-hmm. fives are almost 400 so it's not it's not like really pouncing you know yeah i i think it will uh eventually uh Go i think up. it will rise it, it, you know it's it, i think that's a given but i mean how much will it rise the sneaker has, you know, it's basically two different sneakers when you peel the. Mm-hmm. That's so right. I, yeah, I, I think uh, and I think it's going to come to, you know, as it's going to grow. And um, and I, I can easily see this being, you know, it, it rising, you know, double in like a year and a half. And maybe I could be wrong, you know, mm-hmm. but I, I think it's one of those shoes that, yeah, kind of wouldn't mind having. Ain't no skunk. That's for sure. It ain't no skunk. That's true. Skunk averaging around, we'll just say like twenty five hundred. Yeah, no, that's a yeah. I mean, mm. seven thousand for five point five. Fuck out of here. I mean, these numbers aren't real, but just seeing yeah. them sort of is insulting. Walk the dog. Walk the dogs were like three fifty when they first came out, and now here we are. They're like six hundred now already. Yeah, that's the question I want to ask you guys. It's because I'm not I'm not the biggest fan in, in, of resale, but you know, is do you? You know, are you do you guys feel like Yo, I got to get in before it becomes too up- unobtainable? Uh, I as mean, I get as I get older, I think, no, not really. Like for sure, for like these, the Hawaii's are kind of a bad example for me to say, like after being like, I want these at 300. Mm-hmm. Um, but for the most part, it's like, no, like, for example, you know, I'm, I'm there's more shoes I can afford now, you mm-hmm. know. So like after sitting a few pairs out that I wasn't able to get when I was a kid. It's like, you know, whatever. I'm able to afford it now. I'm doing okay. Mm-hmm. I think it just kind of, you just, if it's, if it fits into your life somehow, it'll, it'll come to you. You know what I mean? I got yeah. you. You also, um, you also are down to like trade or sell something in order to get something else. That's, that's a compromise that not a lot of people are willing to do. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a very adult way to approach it. Mm hmm. I think that's what you have to do now at this point, you know, and we've discussed this plenty of times on this podcast where if you are paying resale for all your, you know, straight resale for all your purchases, you are either a Baroque. rich or be um, stupid as fuck because, <laughs> you know, every month you'll be saying, damn, I need these. Damn, I need these. You have to figure out how to, you know, move what you have to get what you want, you know, mm-hmm. and 
And if that means moving, you know, a bunch of fucking T-shirts that you've had or some sneakers that, you know, that are really valuable that you had for almost a decade, move them. Do what you got to do. If that's what you want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Lawrence, um, speaking of moving, um, I kind of want to talk about uh, Salehi Benberry's uh, Finders Keepers New Balance promotion. Okay. Well, I don't know if it's like a promotion. I guess it's just like how he's releasing the sneaker, but you're just talking about movement in general. So like uh, to, I'll speak generally just to fill you, whoever doesn't know in. So he has a, a collaboration with New Balance mm -hmm. where he made 50 pairs of this like crazy sneaker. Yeah. Luke, pull it up. Yep. With like the leopard print. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's like three kinds of leopard print on there. That shit is just all sorts of crazy, like seemingly unwearable. And it's like you're that type of person. Um, but he's not selling them. Mm hmm. You can't buy these anywhere. You can only find them in places that he places them. So he's all around. I think he's in L.A. Um, yeah. If I'm mistaken, I apologize. But the picture yeah, so is in Staples Center. So, I yeah, so he's just dropping these shits all along L.A. And through his story, he's like giving hints and shit. And mm -hmm. like, you know, we talked about how like there's no real experience in sneakers anymore. Well, I think Salehi has sort of said, nah, fuck you guys. That's not true. Because uh, the amount of hype over finding these. I'm so jealous that I'm not in L.A. just to try and find him. Yeah, me too, man. I mean, it, just one way to sort of like so he came off that Anta project where I feel like everybody um, got a pair. I feel like everybody mm -hmm. was willing to it was able to get one. And there were uh, technically a hiking shoe. So that's encouraging, like having an experience more to the side of like, Luke, what you were saying, mm -hmm. like now that I have the sneaker, what do I do with them? Yeah. Um, but these ones, you have them both ways. So it's like, what did you how did you find them? And what did you do with them after? Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. Um, I don't know if I've. I think I told you guys off mic about like this New Balance Discord that's uh, floating around. Yeah. Um, so I don't want to give too much information out because those guys are really tight, like on, on what they do and say in there. Um, it's like a circle of trust where they all really help each other. But what I will say is, like, at one point there was like double digits people on the chat function at Discord helping this one dude find one of the sneakers, and like the guy, I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. But like even the uh, the secondary experience of the guys telling me who helped the guy who found it. Yeah. I mean, that's some that's some fucking cool shit right there. I wish there was more shit like that. It's kind of like what the Nigel Sylvester drop was like. But it was so like th through the sneakers app that it seemed disingenuous. You know, could you could you remind the listeners about the, the Nigel Sylvester drop? Just the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Lawrence helped me out, but basically it was through the sneakers app that he was um, hiding sneakers all around New York City. It, well, yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, it was like the sneaker yeah. stash uh, yeah. where, you know, you had to, you know, certain locations and, you know, and the thing about it is with certain things like this, people already know where the drops are. Right. So they are already, you know, in the loop. And, you know, so people were following Sylvester from the first location to the second yeah. location and, you know, and, and, you know, so there were people that were able to do well, but for the most part, it was it was pretty tough. Yeah, it was it was I'm not going to say more of a backdoor situation, but like Lauren said, I think it was less genuine, mm -hmm. um, especially with like Nike sort of like puppeteering the whole thing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So mm -hmm. but with this, it was just Salehi. It was just him going and finding spots that he liked to hide. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually had the pleasure of talking with him for a hot second. Um, I was trying to explain to Trey like what was happening and he just FaceTime Slayhe. So I had to like explain it to him. Mm -hmm. He was like, he was like, yeah, this seems kind of crazy. Cause people were like following me in the car, like right behind me, knowing exactly where I was going. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, dude. Cause it was like a team of kids <laughs> like mm -hmm. tracking you like detectives. Yeah, man. <laughs> but that's some cool shit. I kind of like if, there, if there's some way that next time we are able to do a giveaway, I would love to do something like that. Cause that's cool to me. I say, I say we do <laughs> we do a giveaway, but we have to like you have to get like a punch card and you have to watch us do stand up 10 times <laughs> and you have to cash it in. We're like the coupon comedians. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, Luke? Exactly. Like we, you have to watch like 10 sold out uh, sold out Tuesdays uh, to even get a, a chance to look at the shoes. You know? <laughs> funny i like that maybe it's, we should do that i'm uh, listen i'm i'm not against it i got some ideas you know we got some friends that know that know how to make some sneakers <laughs> that's very true very true very true <laughs> but yeah shout out to slay he just because i just think that's just a cool experience to, especially you know after covid this whole thing it's like i'm i'm i differ a little bit man i'm not the biggest like it's like fuck more east more hunts 
more shit, more hoops that they're making people who want sneakers go through. You know, kind of comes bullshit at times. You know? Well, when you're by yourself, I totally understand what you're saying. Like, I don't want to like by myself go fucking find some shoe. Yeah. But if no. it's like, imagine the the four of us, Meanie, in a car, and we got like hints and shit. We got nothing to do yeah. on a Saturday. Like, come on, dog. That's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's the thing. As true comedians, we always have something to do on Saturday. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, we always mm-hmm. got a show to go to. You know, you know what I'm saying? And not at 2 p.m., dog. Unless you're doing two those weird ones. Not not at 2 p.m., but if you get your punch card <laughs> at the shows. <laughs> Yo, that's actually <laughs> I want to do that. It's pretty funny. It's we, funny. we run a show. We can do that. We can do whatever we want. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um. L, I know you, so you're coming in late. Um, so I basically, before you got in, I was talking about uh, the cause exhibit that I went to earlier at the Brooklyn Museum. Um, and we sort of ran through a bunch of stuff. But I don't know if there's anything you specifically wanted to talk about. Um, nah, man, it's, uh, you know. Um, Not to been put you in- on the spot like that. No, no, no. It's just been an interesting week um, for buying stuff for, you know, for um, sneakers, whatever. I, I don't, you know, I've had, it's it a cool week. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Did you try to get the clock? The nah, I, didn't try, I didn't try. Clock? I didn't try to do any of that, man. I had. I had actually. I had actually bought. Uh, finally, I had bought my my neutral gray ones off of. Oh, Go. you got them already. Ooh. Finally, I finally purchased a pair. So, uh, you know, so I was like, no, no more spending money. Right. <laughs> this yeah. Got you. I uh, yeah, I spent a little too much on those. So <laughs> too much in the sense of like, if you look at the price, you're like, okay, but like, you're happy with it. I'm happy with it. So all right, that's all yeah. that matters. All right. So so you're kind of a are you we never really got into how you guys feel about like bot like getting in at a certain level for sneakers, you know? Well, I I will always go back to Mars Yards as my don't fuck, don't, don't, don't do it and and regret it. Don't not do it and regret it. So mm-hmm. there you go. I mean, you know where I'm at, bro. Just I if I'm not handed it, I don't yeah. like what am I doing? Exactly. Mm-hmm. Chris is Chris is consistent. I'm a designer. I guess you're for free. Yeah. <laughs> if I don't get it for free, it's not mine. But yeah. OK, no, I'll do retail. I did retail on the Guava Force. Like, I'll do retail. You just got to send me a link that I make sure I get the retail. <laughs> but I will say I'm not out here buying everything, you know, resale. And 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 now I'm about to beat someone in the head for some pair of sneakers because I'm like, I got to feel like. I'm not, you know, I got to make some of it back. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, but that's cool. I mean, um, I guess any final thoughts, any last words on this episode? Mm, I'm good. Everybody stay healthy. Stay, stay happy. Healthy. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you can follow uh, Luke at your visas, um, uh LZD325. That's L. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm not that Cheney. C-H-E-N-E-Y. Mm-hmm. Um, meanie three meanie in the back. He hates when we plug him, but that's our guy. You know, he makes this shit sound good every week. So shout him out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we got the Instagram at sub podcast NYC. And then the discord is the main one. I mean, like visually social media, like we're on Instagram. That's like our main hub. But discord is really where we're like hanging out. You know, that's where we're chilling, having a good time with everybody. Yep. Yep. And listen to Lawrence's podcast. I hate this job. That's right. Oh, I do hate my job so much. So. <laughs> I hate it. I fucking hate it. That last episode with Usama was so funny, man. We started talking about drugs up top, man. Yeah, you know I what know. I mean? Fuck it. Let's oh, talk. Oh, my about- man. You know, I'm not going to speak it. <laughs> Yo, he, my he, man. Uh huh. Got- nah, he can. He has a good time, bro. <laughs> yeah, he, he has a good time. He spoke, uh, talked about uh, you, uh, how he saw you one night. You know, he was drugged out so yeah it's a funny oh, it's, you guys talked about that i think it was off camera but it was oh, off okay mic, but yeah it was fucking hilarious so. yes um he 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 has a lot of love to give yes <laughs> <laughs> pause um but all right guys that's it for this week um again follow us subscribe please like review whatever you can do like you know yeah. we don't like asking this because you guys just should be doing it if you're no, listening no, no, please no. give it a no, shout no fuck that do fuck that, that. You- we like we like asking <laughs> and we're gonna keep asking until you keep doing it all right fuck that that's a fact if you don't do it every week we're gonna have to remind you so please rate rate very fair videos you know rate rate everything five stars review mm-hmm. leave some nice reviews tell some people about us you know some mm-hmm. streetwear friends of yours let them know let them know and join That's our right. discord join yes. the motherfucking discord y'all we yes. love y'all the threat from the french guy in lawrence <laughs> there you go there you go all right guys have a good one peace peace, peace.